pretty sure that I pushed this car into the garage. I think it had run out of fuel. So that's why I needed to get some. But luckily we've got the original fuel cap, which is quite rare on these, that goes with the key. So we've got fuel in there now next thing to do is get a battery on there so i've just fully charged one up the batteries this is one of the spare batteries that i've got so that's ready to go um got the adapters on the top as well so we can change them over for the square terminals that are on the Ford terminals you can see just bolt them to the top and we can get this in the car and get the car running So I love how well this car starts up. Literally, it's been sitting for I don't know how long, put some fuel in it, a fresh battery, and she starts up first time. We just heard it, heard it start up. And that mongoose exhaust note, this is one of the best mongooses I've ever heard. Um, I've had them on my RS turbos, my Escorts in the past, but this Fiesta one's got a deeper note. It does really sound good. Three and a half inch tailpipe, I think you agree. So I'm just gonna let this warm up for a little bit and then we'll pull this out. You can see how tight it is down the side of the garage. So I'm gonna give this garage a little bit of a clean out while it's out as well. Well guys, you asked for it and now she's out of the garage. I think you probably see in the last videos when I done um, what was wrong with this car, basically. Got some rust issues as you can see. It's had a bodge repair with just some stick stuck on plastic behind here, you can see, but obviously I pulled that off now. It was just sections of that. If you didn't see it, ridiculous. Just stop water getting in or whatever they wanted to uh, use it for. Luckily as well, it hasn't creeped into the chassis number, which I don't really want to show you because otherwise there'd be another Fiesta with this chassis number, but um, I guarantee you it hasn't, so I can cut it out without damaging the chassis number. But what we're going to do is we're just going to make up some sections because up to about here, the floor is actually pretty solid. I've been underneath, scratched around with a screwdriver, and it goes back to lovely bare metal. You can see you've got the sand deadening, the original sand deadening. Don't really want to get rid of too much of that. Um, so we're going to just cut it out to wherever we need, and we're going to make a seal up. So obviously I'm going to um, check the inner seal as well when I get underneath the car. So I'm going to jack it up why will it down make sure there's no more corrosion going up the seals and if there ain't we can just make some panels so that's quite fun looking around the old cars obviously you know if you've watched the old videos that i found the actual bill of receipt and the spec list underneath this carpet at one point it was in spanish which is apparently where all these cars are made and you can see look at these block terminals i absolutely hate them do it properly if you're going to do it but you know someone's labeled stuff up door trigger which is the right way to do it really but you know look how much wiring they just left instead of cutting it down and doing it properly well i've just pulled the seat out so it's time to get this carpet out and luckily on the old school cars there's really not much to get out obviously i've pulled out the side trim and that already i um, just got to get the center console out um got to pull it out from down the back just get rid of these um seat belt brackets but the actual seats themselves are pretty good you can see there's hardly any wear on them which is quite lucky so i don't have to replace any of them just got to replace that back seat as you see for some reason it's gone hard and clean up this carpet a little bit Right, so after wrestling that sand deadening out around the bulkhead, we've eventually got to the floor pan and you can actually see the floor pan's actually in really good condition, much better than the Escort was. Obviously the Escort was rotted all along here. It was it was pretty bad actually, but that's sorted out now. Um, you can see on this seal on the passenger side, it's actually very good. There's nothing wrong with it, no repairs needed. You can see it's very clean. Um, you've got this section along the bulkhead here that if you've seen a previous video, they'd 
glued on this plastic to stop water coming in. I didn't know where it was, but the comments section said they do it to stop water coming in. I had no idea they'd done something so stupid. Um, so that's got to be cut out. Once that's cut out, that'd be all sorted. So that passenger side will be sorted. Um, some reason, though, on the driver's side, the seal rotted out on the, well, not the seal, the floor pan. The actual seal itself, you know, that clean up. Might have to put a little bit of metal in there. We'll see when we uh, get underneath it. You can see here, so it's, uh just needs to be cut. There's no point of replacing that whole floor pan, especially as it's really good condition. So we're just gonna join this section here, make some panels up for that, and then see what we're gonna do about this section here. So I won't know really until I get underneath to see how bad that is and see how far it goes along. It does look like it goes up to like this sort of section here, but floor pans don't exist for this car anymore. So um, they used to do Ford ones, but no reproduction ones anywhere. I've looked all over the internet. Um, if you can find them, let me know, but I'm, I'm more than 100% certain. There is none available. So we're gonna get on with this now. Now you know it's an IRS though, when you've got to sweep up the floor pan before you do any work on it. So I've got the Hoover as well. Right, so I've just got the car up in the air and we're gonna strip the body kit off it now just to see how damaged the seals are. Pretty much gonna be as bad as the rest of it probably. So we pull that off, it's gonna look terrible while they're off because when the body kit's off these cars, it looks really bad. So I've jacked the car up from the wishbone mounts, which is obviously strongest point because we've hardly got any seals on this side at the minute. And um, I'm deciding whether I actually wanna save this shell or not. Right, so I've just pulled the nasty arch liner off that goes around the back of the arches. Fad a resident spider up here. I don't know how it's catching much food when the arch liner obviously covered the top of it unless you know bugs are climbing up there you can see here the car has had a patch which i never knew about you can see it just make it out there and you can see on the line perfectly where they always go where they've been welded with mild steel and they haven't been protected from the inside or outside you can see through there you can see that's the bolt there that goes into the floor pan inside the car and that's for the wishbone mount. So the wishbone mounts to here and then the bracket mounts to the actual floor pan itself. I've just removed the driver's side wishbone just so I can show you a little bit more what I'm saying. So you can see this is obviously the bracket that holds the wishbone. So the wishbone sandwich is in between here. Um, and you can see this last bolt at the end that bolts to the floor pan. And uh, this is a plate that actually welded into the floor pan. You can see where the spot welds and that are. This is this section here. Now you can see obviously once I've started undoing that, instead of undoing the bolt, it's just literally ripped it apart. You see the rust and everything. And uh, I've noticed here that it's had a bad weld done in the past. And as you can see again, you know, like always the bodge repairs are the ones that cause the issue. So this was probably all caused by this crappy repair. You can see the weld along here. And you can see that's where the plate welded to. Someone done a terrible repair in the past. And that's what's caused this massive issue here. Now, if I were to add these like 10 years ago when we was breaking them all the time, buying these for like 800 quid, 1,000 pound, this car would be scrapped. Right, so check this one out. I've just removed the side skirts off the, obviously the side seals. And I found this one, this repair underneath. Now look at this one. This is a classic. So you can see what's happened here. The seals rotted out at some point. And um, instead of doing a proper job, maybe putting a seal section in, They've literally tack welded a plate. Well, it ain't even welded on properly. You can see it, so it's just welded like there. Not even had any like protection put on it. Welded a little bit along here when they could be bothered. <laughs> and that's the end of the plate. <laughs> oh my God. So when I pull this off, there's gonna be a massive hole under there. Um, and I don't know if this was just to get it from, I must've just been to get it from an MOT or whatever. And then they hid it underneath the side skirt. But you can see the amount of work that needs to be done to this car. I just really haven't got the time for it at the minute, unfortunately. Um, if anyone out there's got a decent shell, RS shell, uh, don't matter what colour it is, let me know. Drop me a, a PM, DM, whatever you want to call it, on Instagram, and uh, we can talk. Because this car, I really haven't got the amount of hours that's needed to be doing the welding on it at the minute. You know, it is, it is very, very bad. Uh, the seals and everything's right out. And I'm not saying it can't be repaired, so there's a lot of people in the comment section are gonna say, oh, that can be repaired, and I know it can. It's no problem, I can repair this. But it's the amount of hours that I've got to put into it. It's a lot of hours. I'd rather just buy another shell that's a lot better and I can start from scratch. So just for the fun of it, I'm just removing this bit of floor pan and the bolt off of the back of the uh, wishbone bracket and the anti-roll bar bracket. You can see it's probably seized in there, but I've just started to get it moving. So we've got a bit of play on there now, so hopefully I'll be able to get that out and see actually where the repair was and where it actually joined to it. Right, so I just got it removed, 
Um, if this was 10 years ago, they would literally just tack weld this back into the body shell to get it for an MOT, slap some sealer over the top of it and paint it. There we go, we just swept this off the floor pan. I reckon if I stick this on eBay with a logbook, I could probably get six grand for this with the RS prices at the minute. Um, I've seen Series 1s and Cosworths in much worse condition than this. So if anyone wants it, get over to my Instagram. Um, anything over six grand, you can have it. So you can see, look, bits of body filler, you know, seam sealer, you know, some under seal. You could easily put this back together. Within a couple of years, you have a nicely restored RS turbo. I mean, I'll even chuck in this bit of wishbone bracket as well with the bolt. Just can't say fairer than that. So it's very kind of full to um, invent this like quick release wing. You can see, just comes off the seal like that. Right, so let's start on this side of the car. So we're gonna get the side skirts off again and see what horrors we find underneath here. So we're gonna start off by removing this wheel um, and then we're gonna get this arch liner out again and check behind here, see where the wishbone mounts are. You know, they look a lot better on this side, but still a bit crusty. So we won't really know. A little bit of um, rust on that chassis leg. So um, that might just be seen, so I'll check that. Uh, this is obviously the floor pan on this side is a lot better. You see the seals where people jack it up in the wrong position over the years and they've squashed the seals down. That's a real pet hate because anything gets in between there over the years, salt and grime, it just starts rotting the seal out. So let's get these side skirts off and see what we've got underneath here. All right, so the side skirts off for this side already. Um, a little bit better weld on this side, um, but you can tell that whoever done the welding didn't even put any sort of like um, protection over it, even primer. So you see they've ground it back and they've welded it up. You can see they've put probably a plate all the way along here by the looks of things. And it ain't been done that badly to be honest, but why would you do a job like that and then not even put any protection over the top of it? Absolutely mental. So you can see, literally just rotted again straight underneath the skirts. Pretty much torn down as much as I'm going to be able to get her at the minute. Left the rear bumper on for now, but um, got all the arches off as you see. Um, front wings and that are pretty good still. You know, there's no rust and that around the wings, and they're obviously the original RS wings because they've got the uh, holes in them. Front panel um, obviously been cut up for the big front mount intercooler. That will, well, I don't know if that'll be addressed or you know leave that panel like that. You can see obviously the other wing still good. No, no rust and that on it. Little bit of surface along here where obviously the wheel was caught on it at some point where it's been running wide wheels and um, this side is the best side obviously the passenger side as you can see there's actually um up into this arch here it doesn't really get that bad but um so what i need to do is obviously find a panel for this and i'm probably going to join it in at the swatch line the actual recall is all right and i don't really want to be uh replacing the whole lot for that little bit of rust there and i'd rather patch it in with this uh, petrol cap in it already rather than putting in the petrol cap afterwards and it being in the wrong place or whatever um, you can see obviously the original um, arches as well on the car because they've got the holes for the rs body kit you know when they've been panelled over in the past because the holes ain't there or they've been drilled in the wrong place so all the seals along here you can see are actually pretty good you know not too bad on this side. Really, for some reason, it's the driver's side that really suffered the most. I know obviously around the arch on the other side is bad and the, the driver's side arch ain't as bad because it don't go up as far and it ain't obviously got the petrol cap there. Um, got a little bit of corrosion on the inner arch. Like for a welder, this is absolutely no problem. Um, it's just so time consuming for someone like me to be able to do. That's the only problem with it. So obviously we've got this nasty patch under here and for any welders look away now because that is an absolute state. I mean, <laughs> it hasn't even been properly welded on. So I really want to pull that off and actually see what was underneath it, what they patched it off with the first place. So I probably will do that. This other section here uh, of seal repair. Now that was obviously like that. Um, and I've just pulled it off and it ain't even a weld there, I don't think, unless it's like corroded away. Might have been there, but look at that. <laughs> so that's what they hid. I don't know how many years ago that was, but literally just slapped a panel over the top of it. And then, um, decided they want to put the body kit over it and the MOT tester did is never going to find it is he unless he takes the body kit off so that was a good little trick 
you can see this is the wing that's come away from the seal here and then this is where the hole is so as i say um welders out there be looking at this thinking absolutely no problem um no problem at all because you can see under here it's actually pretty clean the floor is actually clean especially on the uh passenger side it's got no rot at all across the floor it's this seal section here what normally happens is where they get jacked up on these bits here and they get pushed and uh, then salt and corrosion gets in between the two seals you can see like where it's been jacked up and that's where it starts to come away and that's why it's happened all the way along so you can see there obviously it looks worse than it is because once you start taking the paint off and bringing it back to bare metal you can see the seal is totally gone on that side so something I want to point out again, um, same with the white RS Turbo is all the corrosion on these cars come from the previous welding that just gets done so poorly just to get it through its MOTs and that's why these cars did rot so bad because the, um, the repairs were so poor. So obviously this section here is an old MOT repair you can see and it joined into the structural part of the wishbone so they've done that just to get it through instead of actually caring about what the structure was like so obviously you've got that section there you've got like that repair there you can see then you've got that repair there the only other bit this section here wasn't repaired in the past and you can see it ain't really terribly bad you can easily put an arch in there but then obviously there's a repair behind this bumper here i can't be able to pull it off to show you and then this has all been repaired in the past so this has started rotting again because all someone done is put filler over the top of it you know you can see look there's just that's filler so the rust was so bad that they literally there's the rust underneath and there's the filler over the top they didn't even bother cutting it out literally just filled over the top of it and then painted it so you can see it was rotten a long long time ago and if they'd done a proper job repairing this this wouldn't be rotten now because uh, it would be a, a proper repair so you can see if I just keep peeling this off there's just going to be more and more filler so that's uh, one of the reasons these cars rotted so bad because the repairs were so bad obviously there's another repair under here and you know it, I mean it's not the worst repair in the world but they didn't put any protection on it so you can see it was all welded into the seal and you can see the grind marks still they didn't put any protection on it so you know how are you supposed to uh, how are you supposed to have rust protection if there's no primer or anything on it you can see the seal along here is pretty good right, so let's move on to the mechanical side of this engine so we've got obviously the 1600 cvh in here and it's an actually a really good strong bottom end it's really quiet it's got full hydraulic lifters in it anyone knows that they're the best ones that come with these and now you have to change them to solids because the hydraulic lifters are so terrible Got a, we had a CVH35 cam in it but I changed it for a Piper T2 because I just found them a bit more road friendly a bit more aggressive on the road especially with the T3 so you've got the T3 conversion on this car you know these cars normally come with a T2 so we've changed over to a T3 obviously a T3 manifold um, the dam pipe's been modded for that um, so it's got a full mongoose exhaust system um, breather system I know it's obviously a terrible looking at a minute because it's just been sitting in the garage and you know it would never stay like that it all be ripped out and refreshed got beige injectors in there anyone who knows these RS turbos know that the uh, Fiestas the EFI management you go for the beige injectors and we have a super chipped ECU remapped by MSD so that ECU is up there you can see it's been remapped uh, chipped by MSD to run uh, 21 psi I think it is and it pushed out just over 220 horsepower so it's just as powerful at the minute as the uh, white RS turbo that's on Cosi management but this car is obviously maxed out um, this is a stage 3 T3 that's on the car at the minute not that it matters really because the car you know isn't set up properly or anything it's not been on the road for a long 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 time bottom end's not got steel rods in it it's got stock rods but forged pistons oversized pistons that's all been uh, rebuilt in the past we've got a brand spanking new AP4 paddle clutch on it um, we've got an RS Turbo LSD gearbox on it because the Fiesta Turbos, if you don't know, didn't come with an LSD. Um, you had the LSDs in the S1, which were a little bit more aggressive than the LSDs in the S2, but this is an S2 box on this at the minute. So obviously we've got this massive paint paste front mount on it that's had the, it all cut out to be fitted. And then we've got an S2 aluminium rad in there as well because the Fiesta Turbo ones are tiny and they don't cool it down enough. That will be changed because I don't like the way that this crossover goes that way or whatever. I like the original crossover that you see on the white RS Turbo that sits there. Probably get a GRS front mount for it, get rid of that pace one because I just don't like it at all. So obviously under here we've got the uh, Mongoose exhaust system, the full exhaust system. You can see Mongooses don't come with a flexi, that's how you can tell them between the Magnex and the Mongoose. 
they don't have a flexi that's in pretty good condition then obviously we're going around to the mongoose three and a half inch tailpipe nice little back box on it and that's why it sounds so good so i'll give it a quick start up just so you can hear it up close so you can hear the car doesn't miss a beat mechanically it runs absolutely amazing i am an escort person a ford escort man um, i'm not a fiesta turbo man but you can hear how quiet this engine is very quiet cvh you know cvh is a very rattly normally so if you listen to that it sounds really good it doesn't chatter like the cosworth manager's cars <laughs> But still sounds amazing so this car hasn't had an oil change and i'd say around nine years it hasn't had any fresh oil but if you look inside here look how golden that oil is still it's as fresh as the day it went in and that just shows you like you can see that you've got the uprated springs in there as well you've got the nasty rocker arms that we changed over on the white rs turbo for the roller rockers but um you can see how healthy this engine is pulled off a bit of that panel just to see what they tried to cover up i might start cutting away at the weld just to have a look but you can see the seal is proper rotted out in here and uh you can see where they try to weld it along here where the heat has burnt away at the paint don't even look like they ground it back to bother welding over the top of it which is hilarious you can see that that went like that scorched the paint so i don't someone out there hopefully they're watching this video done this job please please never work on a car again never do any sort of welding you're a danger absolute danger but we've got a beach i found a beach in here look most of the sand stuck my hand in there there's stones all see here look. look all the sand and that's in there i don't know <laughs> must have come in through this hole underneath here so that's absolutely toast so you can see how bad this car is it's absolutely terrible and i just don't have a lot of motivation for it being a fiesta and I don't mean to offend like Fiesta guys out there because you know car whatever car you're into you're into I've always been a Ford Escort man and ever since I was 17 I had Ford Escorts um, I've had RS800s uh, Fiesta RS Turbos XR2Is um, and I've just never been the biggest Fiesta lover but it's a Fiesta RS Turbo it's a rare car so it's worth saving because the welds are so bad literally just got a screwdriver and been able to peel it off the state of this Literally pulling out chunks and chunks of metal out of here. That seal is absolutely toast. So obviously they've just patched it over. Looked like there was a hole in there to begin with. You can see it actually was pretty rotten even back then. And then they just patched it over the top. But you can see like it's structural. So you see obviously that's the outer wing attaching to the seal. And there was no weld penetration at all because you can't weld to rust. It's just not possible anyone knows that so obviously this was never going to weld to the rust they just want to get through an mot or to sell it or whatever they wanted to do with it look the state of that i just dug out another part of the sill and i don't know what's going on here it looks like it's concrete or something don't even look like metal that don't so yeah i don't know what that is that looks like concrete <laughs> a brick that's not that's not part of the seal but i just dug it out of there so it's up here there's more of it up here it's uh some unknown compound going on there not really sure finding all sorts of things i found a snail in there with paint on it uh, and the hole's getting bigger so while i was laying down here looking at this seal and in desperation i looked at the uh the badge on the evo and it's even worse i think even worse than the rust on that fiesta is this badge evo 5 600 plus so that's got to come off put it on here give me a little bit more horsepower maybe so the idea of this video was i see a lot of comments in the comment section all the time asking about this car so i thought i'd do a video on it just so you could see how bad the car was and i just haven't got the time at the minute to do this car so i'm going to be putting it back in the garage now and maybe never do it maybe i will um what i am looking for at the minute though is a mark 4 series 2 escort shell either in gray or black so if any of you have got this one sitting around in the garage for a project um that you want to get rid of uh, ideally with no running gear in it 
like just a rolling shell. Head over to my Instagram, um, links in the description, and drop me a message on there because I'm very interested in one. Preferably black, but gray will do as well. Um, don't want it to be an absolute rock box. Don't want to have to do a ton of welding to it. Don't mind a little bit of welding, but nothing like this thing. So if you have got one, drop me a message. You can see the original tack disc still on here. So that was the last time it was taxed, this car. You can see it's been off the road for a while. So yeah, I thought I'd give you a quick review of the car. Show you why it's not been done yet. 